circular areas, little deposits of crystalline formations in these circular areas. Now, I decided to go, being I saw that it was what I call a composite, it means it is composed of a varying grouping of materials. I had to go to a discrete form of analysis, not just general analysis or even cutting a piece out, but I had to leave the specimen alone and study it piece by piece. And that was done with the Hitachi scanning electron microscope. I work now with a associate of mine, Dr. Wee, mm -hmm. and this is now a scanning electron micrograph of A1 area, and this is A2. This is 500 diameters. This is now this area here mm -hmm. blown up to 2,000 diameters. Mm -hmm. This is a field emission microscope, so one gets then very, very high degree of depth of field. The specimen was not touched, which means I did no gold plating, no metallization of the surface, so it was left alone. And what excited me was a tremendous ability to get a depth of field in the specimen without iron burning. In other words, the electron beam did not accumulate. The, these surfaces acted as conductors here and gave us then a very sharp, clear delineation of the picture. Mm. Normally you have to take and cover this with gold, you know, to get a mm -hmm. sharp picture. This specimen is called number four, same metal as the sample that turned to powder, dark third process, the silver is the fourth process and the gold silver is the fifth. The preliminary identification of this is copper, nickel, and silver. Silver solder, which is used for many forms of welding, is a combination of silver and nickel. Now the specimen that I'm talking about is right here, and this is the specimen that we're talking about right here. The other lines that one see are the fracture lines from the embedment material and the cracking that took place. We'll go into polarizing the light. And now one gets a lot of the glare away one can see this specimen is dark, but there are again, I call your attention to these lines, these vertical lines. Now we're going to look into that center part, that whitish area, and this line. We'll increase the magnification and see. We're now viewing at Nomarski interference contrast at around 50 diameters. We see these highly birefringent lines, flow process, and again, a series of vertical lines. We'll go to now polarize light and see what further detail. Here's some other areas. This is the boundary of this small particle. To give you an idea of dimension, we'll put a scale in to appreciate the dimension of this sample. These two lines here represent one millimeter, one thousandth, one millionth of a meter. And as one takes this away, one sees the specimen below. It's not very big. Again, these whitish areas around the specimen, showing that there was an interaction taking place between the plastic and the material. We'll go now to a higher magnification and polarized light. We're now looking at the specimen at 63x with a pole objective. The analyzer is out. One can see a small speck of the material it's blackish in color, and 
because of the light now it has. Now we polarize the light. There's extinction position. And one can see there is a structure as I rotate the analyzer slightly. It's tied in there. We move in different areas. Here's the edge. Here's a reaction from the edge of the specimen forming highly birefringent material. Again, these spots, which we see before, here is a complete distinct area. We'll analyze around. We're in the metal. There we see it. This is the boundary of the plastic. We're going in. We're into the metal area here. This is number four. This is the boundary in the plastic. Rotate the analyzer. We can bring it out. Here we are. There are two distinct areas here. These are the marks in the center of the picture again for Vicar hardness measurements. You can just see them. These were done in Switzerland. This will be reported on separately. In this crystalline area, the predominant element was silicon, which is this band here, and iron. And there was a secondary band of sulfur, which is right here. These were very, very intense bands, and we did not attempt to go through the analysis of all the other particular lines that were present. We just took the three main ones, and we stopped there. Mm. We moved to a, another section, and I will come back here to this area. And now we were going into this plane mm. right in this region. And we found evidence of what looks like mechanical manipulation. Mm -hmm. One sees now discrete marks in a diagonal form in this direction and marks in this direction. But what is exciting, it looks like it's been plowed. In other words, a pressure and there is a scar uh, scarfing on either side. Mm -hmm. And you see the regular spacings of these. And I was just working a space group out here, and they're very regular. Mm. We did an analysis of this area here. Now we're at 500 diameters. The elements that we found were totally surprising. The major element, which is shown here, was the rare earth metal tholmium, mm. T-H-U-L, I U M. It was totally unexpected, uh, with a very small trace down here of bromine. Mm -hmm. This minute bump down here was a combination of argon and silver. Now the remarkable thing that we noticed was that, yes, we got this band here. This was the only one that matched in the spectral analysis in the computer, but the secondary bands that are connected with it were not present, mm. which meant that it was a very pure metal, but the secondary emissions were not present. The fifth stage of development, this is sample number six, mounted in a whitish plastic, which they were used in the final development of the spacecraft.